All right, men, I know it's painful and frustrating to feel sometimes like you've lost your vitality, your mojo, whatever you want to call it, uh, feeling tired, unmotivated, lazy, um, and feeling like you're fat. It sucks. And it makes it that much harder, I think, to get up and do anything about it when you're already feeling so crappy. Uh, what I want to make sure of is that you don't make bad decisions based on bad medicine or bad science or bad data out there because frankly there's a lot of doctors that don't manage uh, or recognize or even treat andropause or testosterone insufficiencies or men's health in general properly uh, and that's freaking dangerous for a lot of men like you and me. Today it's time to dive into a topic that I think often gets overlooked with this obsession around total testosterone levels. If you've been following me and my content over the last little bit, you know that I'm all about making sure that we've got all the best data available to make decisions on optimizing men's health. Um, I've already spoken in previous videos about how every day I see men either being dismissed by their doctors when they approach them about their potentially low testosterone levels because the doctors have failed to even perform the right tests in the first place, or men who are in immediate and serious danger of having heart attacks and strokes because of improperly prescribed or improperly monitored or improperly supervised testosterone replacement therapy, TRT, or exogenous testosterone. Today, we're going to talk about a crucial aspect of this journey around testosterone and bioavailable testosterone. Now, we're going to talk about why lowering SHBG or sex hormone binding globulin might just be more important than raising your total testosterone levels. And for most men, I would argue that this is probably the case. Um, so let's unpack SHBG as applied to testosterone. And then after we're clear on that, I'm going to talk about some of the top tools, including supplements and biohacks and dietary factors that can lower your sex hormone binding globulin, thereby increasing your bioavailable testosterone. So before we go any further, let's break down SHBG. Basically and, and simply put, SHBG is a protein. It is made by your liver and it grabs onto or binds testosterone. And in doing so, it makes it less available for your body to use. So sex hormone binding globulin bound or SHBG bound testosterone is essentially useless to your body. It will not cross cell membranes into your tissues and your cells. And it certainly won't get into the nuclei of your cells, which is where testosterone needs to, needs to bind in order to have any effect on your body. So a high sex hormone binding globulin level can effectively trap your testosterone, rendering it completely useless. So even if you have decent total testosterone levels, normal or within normal range, a substantial amount of it might be locked away by SHBG, leaving you feeling the effects of low testosterone because even though your total testosterone is okay, your bioavailable testosterone is suboptimal or insufficient. And this is why I'm so vocal uh, about testing bioavailable and or free testosterone levels alongside SHBG, uh, in addition to testing total testosterone, because to testing total testosterone is on its own next to useless. And without these other tests, um, you can't really safely or effectively make clinical decisions on how to improve the symptoms of low testosterone. So SHBG doesn't get the attention that it really needs when it comes to talking about testosterone. Um, but we know from clinical studies and scientific research and frankly, basic human physiology that lower SHBG levels are associated with more bioavailable testosterone, meaning the testosterone that's free to, to, to do its job inside of your cells. Uh, a low SHBG level then is of course linked uh, often to improved sexual function, more energy, and a better overall sense of well-being. So what can you do to lower SHBG and unlock your testosterone's potential? Let's explore some evidence-based lifestyle changes and dietary choices first. Um, the first thing that I want to mention is just watching your carbohydrates. Um, it kind of goes without saying these days, um, but there are studies that indicate that diets lower in carbohydrates can lead to reduced SHBG levels. So uh, consider opting for co more complex carbohydrates over simple sugars. Uh, and focus on obtaining carbohydrates ideally through fibrous and colorful vegetables rather than grains like wheat and rice and foods like breads and pastas in particular. Um, and I don't think we need to talk about things like the snacks and the candies and stuff like that. 
Intermittent fasting has been shown uh, to help lower SHBG as well. Uh, personally, I'm a fan of uh, 16 to 8 time restricted feeding strategies. So that would be about 16 hours of fasting uh, with 8 hour feeding windows or eating windows, if you'd rather call that. Uh, the other regimen that I quite like uh, are monthly 48 hour fasts. Um, and that's 48 hours, sort of the upper limit of what we would refer to as intermittent fasting. Um, and uh, sometimes when we're talking about intermittent fasting and 48 hour fasts, we're referring more to weekly 48 hour fasts, but this can be done on different types of cycles. And I, I like doing that uh, monthly. Um, that's something that uh, myself and some of my colleagues do as well. We certainly need in our diet to opt for a very healthy fat balance, uh, a diet rich in healthy fats, especially the omega-3 fatty acids, um, those found particularly those found in fish, uh, may contribute to lower SHBG levels. Um, and we know that omega-3 fatty acids in general are anti-inflammatory in nature. Uh, humans, generally speaking, are designed genetically to consume a diet uh, with a ratio of approximately four to one omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, but in North America, with our culture and our diet here, most of us are consuming a diet and maintaining blood levels that are closer to 12 to 1 omega-6 to omega-3. Um, and I see this every day in my comprehensive blood work assessments that we run. Um, and we specifically run a test called omega-3 score, which gives us this ratio. Uh, and it's really uncommon to see people with results lower than 8 to 1. Um, it's actually something that I've, I've noticed over the last several years. Um, avoiding excessive alcohol, obviously this is something that uh, typically comes along with most health promoting strategies, uh, but excessive alcohol consumption has been linked with higher SHBG levels as well, and so moderation is key here. Um, I would mention here though, because um, I've seen a lot of this lately as well, that even a single drink each day over the course of a week, so seven days, one drink each night for seven days, is just as bad, if not worse, for your body, for your liver, for SHBG levels specifically, for inflammation, and for many other overall health markers, uh, than if you consumed seven drinks in one night once a week. Um, and a lot of people kind of pass off their alcohol intake uh, by saying, oh, it's, you know, on average, it's just one, um, and it's just one a night. It's not like I'm getting drunk uh, seven days a week. Um, but it's actually worse to do that uh, than it is to binge once a week. And I'm certainly not promoting binge drinking on the weekends either. Um, so just to be clear on that. Beyond some dietary choices that we've talked about, there are lifestyle biohacks or changes that we can also make that can uh, have a great impact on SHBG levels. The first is adequate sleep. Uh, we know that poor sleep patterns are linked to higher SHBG levels. Um, we also know that lower sleep quality and lower amounts of sleep are also linked to lower testosterone levels. So ensure you're getting enough quality rest each night. I cannot emphasize enough how important sleep is for optimal testosterone levels. It's both important and essential for the production of testosterone, but also for the management of SHBG levels. Regular exercise, of course, so staying active can aid in maintaining healthy hormone levels, including SHBG. Uh, I think that almost goes without saying these days as well. I won't get too much into that, but I did want to take a minute to really highlight stress. And when I say stress, I'm talking about all forms of stress, managing stress and oxidative stress, free radical damage or exposure, inflammation. All of these chronic stresses can wreak havoc on your hormones. Um, and so whether that is physical stress, i.e. trauma, or physiological stress, chemical or biochemical, mental or emotional stress, of course, or whether it's inflammatory, uh, this is one of the major things that we need to work on to lower sex hormone binding globulin. Um, and without uh, addressing this and sleep in particular, it's very difficult to get any movement in terms of bioavailable testosterone when we're talking about treatment uh, of these cases. Uh, while we're talking about lifestyle factors, I should also mention here that SHBG is also increased with aging, uh, with liver disease. Remember that sex hormone binding globulin is primarily produced by the liver. Uh, anorexia also is associated with uh, increased uh, SHBG. So that would be low caloric intake, low protein intake, suboptimal fat intake. I've seen all of those things affect SHBG dramatically. Uh, we know in the literature that anticonvulsant medications are linked with SHBG being higher and hyperthyroidism, so overactive thyroid uh, diseases uh, can be linked uh, and are linked uh, with increased SHBG. 
On the flip side, there are some medical conditions that decrease SHBG. Those include obesity, acromegaly, uh, the use of anabolic steroids, which is relevant in this conversation today, uh, diabetes, uh, and hypothyroidism or low thyroid function. These are um, conditions that are associated with decreased SHBG. And that's likely a, in a lot of these cases, particularly those associated with higher blood sugar levels, my guess is that uh, when it comes to SHBG, that's your body compensating by requiring more testosterone to be active and bioavailable um, due to some of the physiological changes in those conditions. Now, of course, everyone wants to hear about supplements and nutraceuticals that can be helpful to lower SHBG and raise testosterone. Uh, the truth is, guys, there are very few supplements that have good, uh, robust human research behind them regarding the optimization of testosterone. So let me make that very clear. Um, but let's talk about a few of them. Uh, a few of them. Uh, zinc has been shown to lower sex hormone binding, binding globulin levels and enhance the effect of testosterone in the body. And in men, it's particularly important as a consideration in testosterone management because it manages the conversion or mitigates the conversion of testosterone to DHT, dihydrotestosterone. Uh, that's a very potent form of testosterone that really only affects two tissues in the body. That's uh, scalp tissue uh, and prostate tissues. Um, so typically when we're talking about DHT, we're talking about hair loss and prostate issues. I will get into more, uh, we'll get more into hair loss, finasteride and other medications and supplements for shutting down this enzyme called 5-alpha reductase in future videos. But for today, zinc probably lowers SHBG as well as prevents the loss of testosterone to DHT. Uh, a note on boron, uh, boron supplementation might very well reduce SHBG and increase free testosterone, uh, but I don't usually recommend using boron as a supplement. There is concern in the literature about it potentially increasing estrogen levels at supplemental doses, uh, so much so that in Canada, uh, our governing body, uh, Health Canada, uh, requires that uh, boron-containing supplements require a label about uh, breast cancer and other estrogen-sensitive cancers related to boron. Um, on the flip side, though, there are other data that suggest that boron and its derivatives may actually be associated with the inhibition of other types of cancers. So mixed research right now, boron something I typically avoid um, prescribing and recommending to my clients. Uh, a few herbs have a reputation for influencing SHBG levels. Um, the big one right now that's going around the internet, and you probably came to this video as a link from a uh, something about Tongat Ali. Uh, Tongat Ali is also known as Long Jack, and this herb is believed to have sex hormone binding globulin lowering properties. Fenugreek may help in reducing SHBG and enhancing free testosterone. Uh, to, uh, tribulus terrestris. Uh, tribulus has traditionally been used to support male hormone balance, uh, probably influences SHBG levels as well. And the fourth is stinging nettle or urtica dioica uh, is well known for lowering SHBG. Of these four herbs, I prefer fenugreek and nettle root, and root specifically. Uh, I have seen next to zero results for Tongat Ali in my client base. It's also not very well regulated. It's almost never standardized in the crappy products that people are selling online, quite frankly. Uh, and so in my opinion, Long Jack is severely overrated. Tribulus works. I've seen it boost total testosterone as well as lower SHBG. Uh, therefore improving bioavailable and free testosterone levels. Uh, I used to use a lot of tribulus in my practice uh, earlier on, um, but at this point it's a fairly endangered species. It's expensive to get at good quality um, and nettle is probably the best supported specifically for SHBG lowering effects anyways. Um, but when it comes to nettle uh, or urtica dioica, it has to be the root. Most nettles, supplements that are out there, or most nettles that are in products that are out there on the retail market especially, are exclusively from aerial parts and usually the leaf, uh, which is going to contain a different phytochemical uh, makeup. So if your supplement doesn't say nettle root, then it's almost certainly not from the root. Um, it's almost certainly from aerial uh, parts, specifically the leaf. Now, when it comes to supplements for boosting bioavailable testosterone, 
Uh, I am often using formula that are designed for prostate health. Um, they'll focus on shutting down 5-alpha reductase and saving testosterone from being converted to DHT. But more importantly for this video today, they'll also have constituents that will be of therapeutic value and dosage to lower sex hormone binding globulin at the same time. So often these products will have a combination of nettle root in particular, saw palmetto, uh, which shuts down 5-alpha reductase, phytosterols, zinc, and other supporting herbs and nutraceuticals as well. Now, if we know that there is room and it is safe to increase total testosterone, uh, I'd probably be looking to add a testosterone boosting combination product on top of that. Uh, and in that product, I would likely be looking for fenugreek and I really like ashwagandha um, or withania somnifera for those of you who might uh, be looking at herbs from a lot with Latin names. Um, and ashwagandha is also known to increase testosterone. Um, it's been used in traditional Ayurvedic medicine as a libido boosting aphrodisiac, a nootropic and an adaptogen. Um, there is not a lot of data on uh, ashwagandha and SHBG, but it is very inexpensive and we know that it boosts testosterone, particularly in men. Now remember, what works for one person may not work for another person. It's important to personalize your approach and to suit your specific and unique needs. If you are considering supplements for the purposes of improving your health or for boosting testosterone or more specifically for boosting free or total testosterone, you absolutely need to speak to an experienced and licensed healthcare practitioner before you start taking supplements so that they can be evaluated, uh, those supplements specifically, for quality safety, efficacy, purity, consistency, and the standardization of herbs especially, so that you know that what's on the label is actually what's in the product, and that there's also nothing in that product that you don't want that could be dangerous for you, and that the product is gonna be the same in terms of expected efficacy every single time you buy that product, even if it's from a new batch. So, in the quest to optimize testosterone and overall health, do not overlook sex hormone binding globulin. Lowering SHBG is often the key to unlocking your body's full potential and experiencing that vitality boost and the well-being you deserve and are probably missing and are trying to regain. The bottom line, guys, is that the journey back to the top of your game is a, challenge, is a challenging one. Uh, I get that sometimes that feels like an uphill battle and it's an unsurmountable challenge sometimes it seems like. But there are tools that if you get the right information, you can make the right decisions and the best decisions for you in collaboration with your doctors. And that's kind of how I see my job, to provide you with the data and the information so that you can make good informed decisions and so that you can advocate for yourself in a proactive way. Um, so with that, I'll leave you for today. I'm Dr. J. You guys keep being awesome and make sure you're lowering sex hormone binding globulin and not just focusing on boosting total testosterone. See you guys.